Okay, so hi everybody. Um, you may have just seen me five seconds ago. Uh, somebody stupidly made me the administrator, so I have to try and add Sophie. Um, there we go. In Let's hope she accepts my invite. I don't know how to do this. Whose bright idea was it to give it to me? Um, hey, there she hey. is. <laughs> Yay. I did it. I've achieved something. I, feel I saw it go. Katrina Harper started a live video and then it went, live video has ended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. We made yeah. it. We did. We made it. Um, <laughs> There's some questions, I guess, right? Yes. Um, I'm going to find them. <laughs> we need two phones. We should have just done we, this together so that we didn't have... We should have just gotten to the same room proof. and um, chatted because this is not <laughs> the, the high quality entertainment that people have come to know and expect from us. Um, now turned into a comedy. So Yes. Oh, here, I have some. Okay. All right. Um, Amy Doyle you know, so is the show any good, by the way, on a comment? Is that what he said? <laughs> Amy Jordan, so, you're supposed to be um, actually doing some work and not wasting your time on Instagram. <laughs> so get back to work. You should. Um, you should <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to ask you a question, Sophie Skelton. Uh oh. First of all, season six, everybody. <laughs> right? Pretty, and pretty damn from. exciting. Thanks. <laughs> um, what is a question mm. that uh, oh, no one has ever asked you in an interview that you would oh, love to have been asked, other than this one? Other than that one. Do you know what? I do feel really sorry if people have to think of questions because we do get asked a lot of the same ones, don't we? And I can imagine yeah. it's hard to come up with something original. And now I'm that person and I have to come up with something original. Um, uh, if I would like scenes in the very far future. Ooh. Like if Claire and Brie could go to like 3000, the year 3000 or something. Now I've got a oh. song. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> I thought you meant like, you know, when they were like 70. Or do you want to, you want to go like. Oh space? yeah, seven, all right, 70. Can we just be in an old people's home just by the water? It's very calm, there's no Christie's, there's no, there's no battles, it's all good. <laughs> And we've got does Claire still have her teeth? Out. Who knows? She does, yeah. Check Brianna, in next um, week to find out. Yeah, Brianna invented the electric toothbrush in the 1700s. So you're fine. Your teeth look great. Oh, good, good, great. That's that was very, very, very thoughtful of her. Um, do I ask you one now? Well, I seem to have the questions. Why don't I just keep going? Perfect. I'll just do that. Um, and then we can both answer. Is there a favorite and this is from tiny tunny that last one was from just michelle 511 um <laughs> is there a favorite blooper moment from this season that you will think <laughs> that you think will be on the gag reel oh do you know we shot so long ago now and our memory's not that good. i know that's the thing i never like that's why the blooper reels are always so funny because you forget it all yeah and then we you see, see the it and you, like i end up usually when i get it i just end up everyone's like why are you laughing so much because i'm crying <laughs> laughing and i always think do other people see this as funny as we do probably not <laughs> probably not i think we just end up we go a bit delirious don't we when we're shooting and um, I do, I do get asked the question a lot though, who laughs the most on set? And I was like, when you, when you and Sam start laughing or the three of us start, it's like, that's it. it the day's gone. We just can't stop. So bad. I feel like there was a dinner table scene early on. I think the, I just, the matches, right? The matches. Was, I, I, yeah. I think you actually, were trying to like I nearly set matches. myself and Sam on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It actually went down my corset at one point, a little ember <laughs> spot down my corset. And I was like, oh, I've had to do that. It's just like jumping around. Uh, that was actually, yeah, that was a funny day. I'm sure, I'm sure some of that will make it. In the bloopers. It's when we're all together, isn't it? It's a really bad recipe for giggle fest disaster. We get very naughty. We're like naughty school children. And uh, usually whoever's first thing 
tries to wrangle us and tell us to behave and we're always like mm -hmm. we're like <laughs> <laughs> it's very childish um okay this is a more serious question and it's at goyish 76 and it's for both of us um since both of your characters have suffered sexual abuse how do you describe the relationship between mother daughter after the traumatic events and how they help each other to recover well i think we talked about it a lot didn't we in terms of yeah and um, showing how different people deal with trauma and different ways to heal or try to heal and different ways to help people when they're going through it so i think i think it brings them closer and obviously they know what they've been through don't they um and i think just showing that um brianna's there for claire and but can recognize that claire doesn't want to talk about it i think it's a really good thing that that we have isn't it just to show people that actually yeah. you don't have to force people to speak you don't have to speak but just that reminder that someone's there to listen if you do want to is um i think brings some closure well, I think that was really, what's really beautiful about their relationship this season is that understanding and it's like you really do see brie giving claire the space but then Claire is, you know, Claire really needs her at a certain time. And it's like, you have that lovely kind of connection between the two. But I think it was really important to both of us, you know, about exploring different ways that people react to sexual assault and also recover from, you know, mm. and, I, and I think that that was something important that we tried to highlight. Yeah. All right, so at Il Machier, I think, um, for all, well, since it's, <laughs> since we got ditched by the boys, it's just for us. We dropped like flies, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the episode that challenged you creatively the most? Do you want to go first or? Um, <laughs> I think, I think the episode that challenged me the most creatively, I think episode six, I think it's quite, I'm still, I haven't seen it, so I'm not quite sure how it's turned out, but we definitely, stylistically, they were kind of going with a new thing. And also, you know, it took us a while to get to the script to, uh, it's hard to say it without giving stuff away, but we're really exploring, I guess, Claire's inner voice. And I think, you know, for all of us to sort of get on the same page with what we thought that was in a way that we were all happy with, um, took a minute. And, and I think, you know, I think we got there and I hope when I see it, I'll be really happy, but I'm not sure. What about you? Well, I'm going to pretend I know what you're talking about because I can't remember which app was which. But I think I know what you're talking about. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be super powerful. Um, I think, I mean, to be honest, I think it was maybe more... Um, I think, I mean, if we're going to talk creatively, well, I'll, I'll talk, I'll do a logistic answer in terms of having kids on set. You know, having Jemmy run around and stuff. It is, we have a lot of lovely scenes with the Mackenzie family this season, but um, yeah. The kids tend to complicate it more than we do, don't they? <laughs> we might be more childish, but we're big kids. But <laughs> yes, there's a lot of wrangling with little kids too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right. Neither of them. Um, if you had to be stranded on an island with only one character from the show for an entire month, there's an ant on my phone. <laughs> Um, <laughs> which character would it be? Is that your desert island pal? This little ant. <laughs> my aunt. Why is there an ant on my phone? Um, yes, who would you choose to be with? I mean, <laughs> this is quite pathetic, but I'd probably choose Rolo. But <laughs> um, I think practically, I'd probably choose Claire. I mean, if you're on an island, I was going to choose. I was going to choose Brianna because I was just well, like, well, desert island. We'd figure out how to like turn those coconuts into some very good daiquiris. We, we good. And we would have a lot of fun. Out, have a swim. Yeah. Have a laugh. Yeah. Be great. There you go. Just like very extended holiday until have a dance party. Me and know. Roger came and pretended they were saving us and we'd let them think that. Of course. Yes. Thank you. We couldn't make our own way off here. I'm an engineer, but <laughs> thanks for the <laughs> Thanks for the historical uh Historical facts about rafts. <laughs> Appreciate it. 
Um, all right. So V Ronnie's uh, has asked, what have you learned from working with each other? Oh, what have we learned from working with each other? <laughs> all right, I'll go first. <laughs> One thing I've learned from you, and it's a very good thing you do, sometimes when things aren't working on set and you're asking about notes and stuff, when I do it, I get very emotional and I get very like, I go from calm to very emotional quite quickly sometimes. And, you know, sometimes I can get slightly frustrated quickly, but you have an amazing capacity to stay calm. And it's such a good lesson. You're very methodical in your um, dissection of things and why it isn't working, but you're very, very calm when you are trying to find solutions and I've definitely tried <laughs> I'm still <laughs> trying <laughs> but I've definitely tried to to absorb some of that well thank you in in your defense corsets don't help remain calm do they let's be honest <laughs> no. like, is anything. um I think for me it would probably be the fact we work in such tough conditions and people can often forget about the crew or essays or what they're going through and you are very very good at taking care of everybody and fighting for them to have you know heaters and make sure everybody is taken care of and it's um it's a big credit to you because not a lot of number ones would even think about it so yeah well show doesn't get made without them exactly exactly but some people are very integral and important to the whole process so yep Anyone who's a first AD or anyone who's a producer or anyone, remember to look after everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just as important. Exactly. Um, okay, Wakeful Wife. Uh, asks, um, it's Katrina, you've said you use music to get into characters, headspace, but for everyone, what's on your playlist that helps you get into character? Ooh. Or do you use music? I actually, I rarely use music, but <laughs> music. <laughs> um, I rarely use music. I don't use mu music. I don't. <laughs> I don't do that. Um, there was one song. I feel like it was an Enya song or something. It was just, so I struggle to listen to sad music because it just makes me really sad. You know how some people can just cruise in the car listening to Adele? It's just not a good, it's not good for me. Um, but then there was one, um, there was one when Brianna was having flashback scenes of um, of the sexual abuse and there was one song by, I think it was Enya, I have to find it now, but it was just very, very sad and I would just sit in my trailer and just get all all sad by myself and then just walk on the set. Um, so that's probably it, but yeah, I don't really tend to use it that much, but you, you do, do you, don't you? You quite like using it. I use music a lot. I just feel like it gets you, especially I, one of the things I find when you need to be in a certain space emotionally and like the sets are so busy and people are doing so many things and you know yeah. the props guys need to do their job and the carpenters need to do their job and there's just a lot of chaos and stuff going around and so to keep myself in a certain I don't know I always it's like an emotional way like there's keep a, on that there's a way you can... yeah so just sort of yeah. keep myself there and and I think it's a good way of keeping your senses open, maybe, if that, if that makes mm. sense. No, definitely. I mean, or you know I love music the actor morning. talk. <laughs> 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 Mine's like the dance party trailer, isn't it, in the morning? It's just like... You do, <laughs> you, you definitely, we, we now, especially because of COVID, so our, our makeup trailer is like a long trailer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> four, I think it's supposed to have six seats, but really we only use it for four, but then they separate mm. it. The kids. I know, we got split up. Sophie and Richard down one end and Sam and I are on the other. And they've closed it off because of COVID to sort of like separate everybody. And the music pumping from that end, <laughs> the kids end, and us yeah. two old granny and granddad on, on the other end sort of like lumber on and want to put on our nice like mellow Maybe. music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are like... <laughs> and I've got Justin Bieber peaches like, woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah if i'm ever lost on set just follow the music you'll find me exactly um <laughs> all right uh megan kathleen uh d how do you feel that you've grown as an actor from the time you first started until now That's okay. um 
Well, I think it's it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Doing a, a series that goes for this long. Um, so I think you get so much more time to kind of be in your character. And I mean, we sort of, we really do kind of spend all year round with our characters, don't we? Because if we're not shooting, we're either talking about them or doing press or waiting for the next scripts or working on that. So um, I feel like I've grown just in terms of being able to kind of trust, trust my instincts a bit more, I think, and not kind of guilt trip myself if I've not done enough work. Because I feel like I know... I now know specifically for Brianna inside out that it just um just to kind of rest on your instincts and just I don't know I guess that really just trusting yourself just having the confidence to know it's like that's you, a big thing yeah huge thing what about um you? I want to say it's funny I we were talking sort of about this yesterday with uh someone and when I first started because I was so green and hadn't a clue um I used to find it really difficult if like, you know, they had like a, a, a reflector board very close to me, or if I couldn't see the actor directly, or, you know, if, or if the, the boom's circumstances- going like this in your eyeline. <laughs> yeah, and like <laughs> things around the set, like if they were, I just wasn't used to the distractions, you know? And I think one of the things that I've learned as I've gotten so old in the tilt, um, you look but it's so just old. an ability to kind of, zone those things out for the most part mm -hmm. it's like have that tunnel vision i can't remember what actor it was but somebody said that they have slightly um blurry vision and actually they really like it because it just means that they can only focus on what's in front of them and so when they're acting they like it because it does that it just shuts out everything around you it's quite interesting maybe that's you know. what's happened my eyesight's just gotten really bad <laughs> i never wear my contacts <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not technique at all. Maybe it's just I'm getting blinder. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. By season um, 15, we'll be like, Claire is focused. <laughs> huh? <laughs> um, oh, okay. So at CB Sassanuk uh, wants to us to describe our characters in the form of a drink. Ooh, fun. Cool. Ooh. I mean, I feel like Claire and Brianna have so many personalities in one, and they have such an emotional range, don't they? I feel like it's just or every like it's like tequila, get it all in. Um, they're not a drink; they're a cocktail menu. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, let's stick with that. That's what they both are. They're a cocktail. Um, menu. Okay, then. How long does it take you to get back into character when returning for a new season? And that's from at Keisha Joy underscore E. I feel like it really is second nature to us now, isn't it? These characters, like I was saying before, we've, we've been with them so long. I feel like you kind of slip into it relatively quickly. It's more the accent, I think. Sometimes I just need to like get back into doing American for a bit. Same. But, you know, yeah. Well, same with the English. There's, it, there's always like a day or two where you're like, oh, is that... Is that what that word is in English? Like, is that how it sounds? Or is that like, um, but there's a funny thing. There's like all of this apprehension about going back and is it going to be the same or is it going to feel different? And and then, you know, you're doing the fittings and da, da, da. And then as soon as you get on set, it literally feels like the day after yeah. the last day you shot. <laughs> you're like, yeah. oh God. It's like day 217. Like <laughs> yeah. Day 780. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it's, I mean, <coughs> the lovely thing about that is that you really do slide back in, but, you know, very quickly, you just feel like you've always been there. Yeah. And the thing, don't you find, Kat, because we, we shoot relatively quickly in the days, like we get a lot done, that you feel like you don't really have the option to just not be straight back into it, do you? It's kind of, we don't have... No, the... I mean, we hit the ground running and that's kind mm. of what you have to do. And I suppose last season, well, season six was very much, we shot so out of order, didn't we? Didn't we start... Didn't we shoot like Eps four and five first or something? Or no. like, remember it was super no, we old. did, we did one, two, and then we did three and six. I yeah, okay, say. and then four and five. Four and yeah. five were left till the very end. Yeah. So we did one, two, three, six, okay, yeah. seven, eight, and then four and five. Yeah. As you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep us on our toes why not um okay so at shelby shelby that's quite a good handle um what's it like to have so many bairns on set now i think you sort of answered that 
We're a little traumatized, aren't we? <laughs> By Ben's, do we mean the kids or do we mean Richard and Sam? Because Katrina and I actually have to babysit all of them the same amount. That's true. <laughs> this is true. Um, okay, so uh, Gigi Jen, Gigi Jen W. In real life situations, do you ever think what would Claire do in this situation, or what would Brianna do in this situation? That's quite a good one. What do you do? You ever think of Claire in a situation? I hope it's never Brianna, like somebody... I, been in, I feel like one day yeah. I'm going to be hiking on a trail or something. I was just going to say this. Someone's going to fall someone's, over, and you're like, someone's going to fall over, and I'd be like, I got this. I can do the bandage. All I need is clean cloth and hot water. And I can do it. But let and me then get I'll my realize bandana that on I first. Huh? <laughs> like, like, get a bandana on in the wilderness. Of like... <laughs> yeah. like, the clean the clean cloth is for me to get my, exactly. my nurse's bandana on. I'm ready. Um, what about you? Is there, um, is there you know if you were walking see. past a dike and there was a hole in it and water <laughs> spraying, would you be like, ah? Like, here. Yeah. No, do you know, actually, when I did, one time I can think of when I thought, what would Brianna do was, uh, me, I'm just very stereotypically English in that I always apologise for myself. And I remember you and I were walking in Glasgow in the Botanics, and I think I tripped over a step or something, or like my own feet, which I tend to do. And I apologised to the step. I was like, <laughs> oh, sorry. And then I was like, why am I doing that? And I'm trying to channel Brianna more because I just feel like she's so unapologetically herself and just like, confident who she is and ballsy with it whereas I'm just like oh sorry 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 and that was the time actually when I thought well I need to channel some more Brie in my life what would Brianna do Brianna would not apologize to the step exactly or a lamppost because <laughs> I've done that as well to go back and she'd kick that step exactly she's tripping her up <laughs> she would actually she loves to just kick and punch things doesn't she <laughs> maybe that bit I'll uh, keep away from uh, um okay we are we're getting through them um, at always Jisbon, um, what lessons about motherhood have you taken from playing Claire? Um, maybe, I mean, it probably won't come into play until much longer, but one of the things, you know, that keeping things from your children creates, um, distance and I think you have to be your authentic self with your children. Um, and when you are, then that's when, you know, you really have that strong bond. That's nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, Anna Kate 90. Oh, we've sort of answered that. Okay. Uh, okay. A W too well or too well. How do you prepare yourself before shooting a very sad or intense scene? Is there anything that you do not let this get into your head and your personal feelings? Oh, in terms of sort of <clears throat> barriering yourself from it and just protecting yourself. I guess so, yeah. It's quite, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because it kind of depends on, on the scene. I always think that I'm quite good at being able to segregate what's screen and what's not I tend to really work to not take work home emotionally but then I do think there are certain scenes that obviously you just can't it's very very hard to get away from I was talking about this the other day I don't know if you found when you've done um the when there's you've done sexual abuse scenes and things where you feel like it's almost like a muscle memory you kind of get triggered sometimes by little things like it's I don't know emotionally maybe you can try and separate but I think when you do scenes like that it's very very hard to then not be in the mindset of of people who've been through that and it's it's quite a hard thing to segregate isn't it i found well, that's a funny thing because i think like you i you know i think some actors try and like use personal stuff and you know i learned very early on that that's a very it can be a very damaging it's thing a very, very healthy thing to do and so i try to very much separate it and i think you know the circumstances of what the character is going through if you can really you know, fully immerse yourself and empathize with that, you'll put yourself into that situation. But yeah, when you go through these really kind of tough scenes, you work yourself into a state of fear or stress or, you know, anger, whatever it is, you, you know, you're simulating these, these emotions, but your body doesn't really know 
to a certain extent that up. you're yeah. pretending. And mm -hmm. it's one I always kind of, you know, it's a hard thing to sort of understand about your own physiology. <clears throat> how much of it do you absorb? How much of it stays in your muscle memory or any of mm -hmm. those things? But I just think it's really important after those scenes that you do something really nice for yourself, like go take a bath yeah. or, yeah. you know, somehow to like cleanse it out. and Yeah, or even uh, just have company around, isn't it, sometimes? Because mm. I'm quite, when I leave work, I just kind of want to just get my head down and just be myself, learn lines, get some sleep. But actually, when you've done scenes like that, it's very easy to go into your shell and just want to be on your own. But I think sometimes having company is a good thing. But it actually happened to me after, I think it's season four, where Brianna goes to confront Bonnet in the jail cell. And after the scene, I just, because I wanted to make sure that Brianna didn't look weak to him. I didn't, I didn't want her to show her emotion to him. So I was holding so much in. And then when they yell cut, I just like, I just couldn't stop crying. <laughs> I was like shake crying for about 10 minutes. Um, I don't think the director knew what to do. It was Mersey, who was amazing. And she was like, are you, you cool? We good? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm just, it just finally came out. It's one of those things that, yeah, it's uh, like you said, your body doesn't quite know that, um, yeah, that it's not real sometimes. Yeah. No. Give you hugs. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So Arwen Gorns, what can we look forward to seeing next in Brianna's life this season? Do you know what? This is the first season where I feel like Brianna is who she is at her very core. I always think she's, when I say this, it makes me think of Shrek, but I feel like she's a bit of an onion. She has so many layers and I think she's really hard to get to know. And I think we've seen her go through so much that she's been very reactionary. She's been maybe a bit bratty when she was younger or she's been angry, she's been sad, she's been everything. This season, I just feel like she's just calm and collected initially for a little bit. Um, and I just think she's really settling into married life and motherhood. And actually she's um, just the calm, calm amongst the chaos this season, I feel. So yeah. Yay. Yeah, cool collected Brie this season. Here we go. Cool. Um, right, we've got three minutes. So we'll do one more question. Um, okay, this is for you. Polami tweets, in season five, Brie was searching for her purpose on the ridge. Oh wait, no, you've just answered that. Okay, Tina, 42766326 for Sophie. Did you, how do you, how do you prepare or research for Brie's engineering interests and skill in order to portray it so well? Ooh, um, there is one thing that Brianna invents this season well there's a couple of things but one of them I did actually go back and read um just all about how and when it was actually first invented and really how the mechanics of it work um and also actually my best friend's an, an engineer so just ask her the odd the odd little question um yeah is she going to get a credit as an engineering uh advisor on the show <laughs> to just yeah <laughs> I will. I yeah, we should put that at the end. <laughs> um, what about Claire's medical stuff? I suppose it's quite good when we have the nurse on set, isn't it? To well, Claire we have the Dr. Nurse. Claire. Not Dr. a nurse, Claire. Dr. Claire. Dr. Claire. Um, who's been our medical advisor since season one. And she's amazing. I mean, she's amazing for so many other reasons as well. But um, yeah, just to be able to go through different operations or different scenarios with her and she's really good because she's like well here's what we would do in in the real world in the modern day especially this season there's some like really intense things that Claire has to do and you know she's like in the ideal scenario you would do this if you had limited tools at your disposal you would do this Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes she's like but for filming purposes we can marry you know what you would do with also possibly what they were doing back then, but with your knowledge from this. So she's really good at kind of being able to take yeah. all of the different information. You know, I think sometimes some people get like, yeah. yeah, but I think sometimes people get locked into like, well, this is the way we do it now. And she's really good at kind of figuring out what would be the most practical um, and yet the most impactful looking thing. So. That's she's cool. incredible because yeah, i guess a lot of it now is about making it clean and tidy as well isn't it the end result whereas i guess for claire it's more just getting it done in a certain time frame yeah. as opposed to it being you know sort of pretty looking stitches that don't leave a scar or whatever it's very exactly. much just getting the job done and yeah. exactly um, get claire a yeah. gun. <laughs> that's what brianna should be uh should be inventing 
This is All right, it. guys. I think this is our time. Fun. You are the best um, panelist ever. <laughs> Thanks. Good host. Just call, just call me host. Um, I look, I'm, I'm just proud I managed to get on live uh, a second time because that first time was Katrina embarrassing. And I, in I was like staring yeah. at the screen. They gave me the wrong instructions and I was staring at the screen going, but there is no uh, title button. And then I realized it's like, you are live. And <laughs> people are. were saying stuff. I was like, oh. You probably weren't um, swearing profusely as it came on. <laughs> not quite. Inside. Inside, of course. All right. Um, love you lots, Sophie. And thank you so much to everybody for joining us. We love you lots. I'm sure most of you have already seen the episode at midnight, but if not, enjoy it tonight or tomorrow or whenever it's airing, wherever you are. Um, we put a lot of hard work into it, so we hope you really enjoy it. Happy end of Droughtlander. Happy Bye, end of Droughtlander. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you too. I don't know how we get off this time.